So, let's play Master of Orion 3. I'm back. And I'm the White Doctor. Heh, <laughs> more the Doctor of Broken English. <laughs> okay, that wasn't funny. So, we're back here, helping our little crystal empire of little mineral munching goons to conquer the Orion Sector. With lots of German text because I'm using the German Ultima mod. Because it makes the game actually playable, as I mentioned before, I hope. <laughs> as if anyone remembers, huh? Well, back to the game. Well, we found someone, theoretical and enemy, but they're, well, oddly peaceful. <laughs> After all the things I did to make our little silicoids the even the most vile bastards Im imaginable, it's kind of disappointing. But well, the Ultima mod also has modified uh, the different races to become more like they were intended. Uh, in Vanilla, uh, for example, uh, the most diplomatic and peaceful guys would simply attack you outright. The most vile and monstrous things, like the Ifkul, uh, could actually become your friends and partners, which will not happen here. If you're an asshole, then everyone will treat you like an asshole. Funny thing is, in the original program, uh, uh, all this uh, fluff stuff was actually in, but it couldn't be fully implemented because of time constraints. The guys from the Ultima mod simply switched all those things on since they had uh, the opposite problem, too much time on their hands. Hey, they were crazy fans of Master Variant 3, so... Well, here I'm looking at stuff, blindly ignoring that the recording program is running uh, behind me. So here... Uh, I'm demonstrating the diplomacy options with a trading contract with those guys who look like uh, Gazeo's mushrooms. And here we are, a new agent is here, new infantry is built, no plan new planetary defenses, a new system has been found. And here I look here to uh, take a look at it and then send my scout far away. Well, it's, it does not look very good, but since our um, people only eat minerals, we can, well, more easily uh, colonize everything because, well, normally it would be a dumb idea because sooner or later you will run out of food if you uh, colonize every toxic wasteland you find. Even the Mechla, who are essentially robots, or the Xenoids, who are, who are like some kind of weird cyborg things. Uh, have uh, that problem since they need at least half food, half uh, minerals to survive. Apparently they have organic components or some kind of uh, food black market or so. Well, whatever. But well, silicoids only need minerals since they are only minerals. And so you will never run out of food as long as you, well, colonize everything. Well. Except for if you are really unlucky and find nothing, so, uh, except planets without any large mineral deposits. But even then, you can simply get at least a little bit out of a planet. The planet is large, you get lots of it, and hey, we can keep getting diplomatic messengers. Here are them again. Imseis, that's why that was it, uh, their name. Well. Here they want us to cooperate with a non-aggression pact, and I agree, it's a funny little idea. And why not? And yes, they agreed to a trading uh, pact, which will not give us many money at that point in the game. It's much too early. For some reason, they really like us. Well, I guess because those guys only eat... Uh, nah. 100% food and even part of what they're building uses up food because it's organic and shit and so uh, I'm not 
I haven't played them that often, so my memory is a bit fuzzy. Well, and I think there are bastards, because there, there was that one game where I played as humans and had forgotten to take off diplomatic victory. Those bastards colonized, of course, their giant ass gas giants, had tons of population, and then elected themselves king of the universe. Uh, universe, well, master of, masters of Orion. <laughs> and then I suddenly, after more than 300 rounds or something, I suddenly lost. Because those bastards were the new uh, masters. Well, that was pointless, since then I always take diplomatic victory off, because the most guys I play are rather aggressive and, well, there aren't that much of them. Mechler, for example, have small worlds and the silicoids have large worlds, but um, the population doesn't grow strongly. <laughs> the opposite of that, actually. It grows slowly. So we were better bet good at planning. Uh, and since I'm obsess obsessively planning uh, how to build my colonies in advance, I can play them rather well. Yeah, well, and as you can see, I'm colonizing, colonizing like crazy, since the only guys I know are abnormally peaceful. Then I send immigration to a few colonies who aren't uh, actual colonies. It's the, those, uh, do you see those? Can you see those small case letters? That means there are people on this world, but it's not a fully de developed colony. We have no control, nothing. So we now need more people on it. And using uh, immigration uh, makes a few of your people pack their coffers and, well, take a ship, travel over there, and then start a new life on a death, death hell world. Well, mostly it's the, those kinds of worlds that need immigration, because normal worlds who are nice and shiny uh, tend to be colonized right, right away. But it's here, Bevölkerung, population. That's the power point. Normally you get a colony with about 1000 of the points of that. And that's exactly what one colony modu module on one ship will give you. On a green world. If it's a yellow world then you get le less of it and that means that you will have to wait until you get full control of your new colony. And if it's red then on average you will need 4 modules. Or in the beginning 4 ships. And here we have several things jumping us at once. First, the Imseis are liking us even more now. Well, okay. And uh, yes, a new star lane has been added. One of the differences in the Ultima mod is um, apparently several star lines in the beginning of every game are only calculated but uh, are hidden. They exist but they can't be used. And the Ultima mod added a uh, event that makes, uh, according to what you uh, written in the uh, patcher, I think, yes, it was the patcher, there you can um, take a percentage of, say, 10 for 10% or something, and then every round there's a 10% chance that one of these hidden star lanes will become actually visible and usable. Then you get this little message that you can that there is a new star lane has appeared and then you can use it. It's kind of neat because even if you start up with uh, only a few star lanes uh, over the course of the game, lots of them will be added. 10 or 5 to 20 percent is normally the range I could uh, feasibly see going well. If you take more then you will get lots and lots and lots of star lanes until you completely go completely crazy. If you take less than 5% then, well then, then you, you won't see, uh, won't see them often. Well, once every 100 rounds or something. I think I have something like 15% or something. I <laughs> completely forget, I've forgotten how much, but, well, occasionally, occasionally I will see a new star lane. That's it. Then there are neutron stars, it's that silverly thing, and black holes, that's that red swirly thing. You can travel to it, but I 
Never actually get to the point where I could feasibly get technologies to do something with them. But, uh, well, we'll see. Now we have fusion cannons. And sooner or later we get shock troops. Your colony ships are built. And your colony ship has landed. Tinan 1 gets new population from crazy people who want to live there. Well, and we, ah yes, and we have added uh, the enigmatic Ria uh, gargantuan race of large centipede like um, people with lots and lots of industry but also lots and lots of uh, dirt flying around. But they live on gas giants like the player races, and since they are good fighters, they are qu and have incredible industrial output, they are one of the nicest people you can find traveling around. If you see them, even if you don't play, uh, little space crystals who could, can be damaged by just looking at them really hard. Well, even if you play a race who can actually fight on the ground, is my point. You should send colony ships away to integrate them as fast as you can. Better you get them as someone else, because I really don't want to to fight against them, and you shouldn't shouldn't want it too. They are kind of bastards on the ground. After all, every one of them is as large as a tank. <laughs> so, nothing much to say here. Well, uh, Next round, round 51, three new ships landed, and again, our friends. And they want open border trade. Well, okay. The longer I can string them along, the better. <laughs> they still like us. <laughs> so, new, ra new space torpedo rocket technology is on the way. With quantum power, shock troops and psyops are built for new armies, and we have a new colony. Two new colonies. Blamore 2. Weird name. And, it's, and this is a reddish hell, but for silicoids it's actually not that bad. Well, another thing, sometimes development areas, those deers or regions here in the German version, they have uh, specials added, sometimes entire planet is special, like those hail of meteorites right above, Meteoritenschauer in German. Sometimes it's bad, sometimes it's good, and sometimes it's really good and sometimes it's really, ba really bad. One thing I found in my G German LP playing Mechla was an artificial planet, some kind of Machian planet or something, or artificially built planet like in Hitchhiker's Guide of the Galaxy. To the galaxy! Why I keep, why do I keep doing that stuff? So, mobilization center, defense, regal. Even for defenses for the planet. Yeah, yeah. Everything is going reasonably well. And remember, I play on, on hard mode, but still. Funny how, does I, how that works, huh? Everyone should hate us, but well, for some reason we seem to only stumbled upon the only race who, well, wouldn't really fight or want to fight us, at least not with us, without us attacking them. Huh. Ooh, yeah, English is hard. So, next round. 78 cycles, something like 78 to 150 years, if I remember correctly, correctly what a galactic cycle is. Uh, based on something something center on black hole, science fiction mare, uh, finger magic. It's time. Something between um, a year and a year and a half or something, maybe two years. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. Let's say one and a half years to stay sane. So, nearly every world in my home system is colonized now. Lots and lots of colonies, everything turns red. Lots and lots of colony ships. And I keep preparing and waiting for the time when I have actual... the next tier of weapons and stuff researched, because... 
if you get lucky on don't stumble about, about some enemy in the beginning, then you really should just colonize everything you can. Just build colony, colony ships and keep building them until, until you actually stumble upon an enemy. If you find a race who you feel will, who you think will end up on the wrong side of your cannons, then you should immediately Stop everything you're doing and design new ships and start building them. Well, obviously that only works if you keep making your races as industrious as possible, as I keep on doing. Research and industry are the strong points of all my races, and if I'm lucky I also make sure they have the minerals they need to keep on tracking. And, uh, and diplomacy? Pfft, <laughs> who needs that? Really, if you want to play a diplomacy simulator, um, I don't know, are there actually games like that? Hmm. Well, I prefer using the good kind of uh, diplomacy, the cannon boat diplomacy, to stay in the German terminology. And that was it. Well, next time, um, we'll actually start designing ships next time. So.